All right, a nice day today. Not a cloud in the sky. I like it. All right, so last night, after I turned the camera off, as I mentioned in yesterday's video, I was going to learn what to do. Well, I stayed up for a good three more hours, four more hours, really, listening to Martin from Meshuga on the Rob Flynn pond podcast talking about touring and stuff. And uh, I got into the podcast and I went ahead and took this out, laid out all the instructions and was reading some of it. I didn't get all the way through it. I still have to get all the details and everything, but um, you'll notice little blue pieces of tape all the way around. From there down, that's going to be where the green is going to be. It's four feet from the from the floor all the way around. And I actually went ahead and I painted. I'm out of paint. I have a little bit of paint left, just like enough for to use the brush for touching up. I painted everything from... Like here up, you can kind of see the color difference, but all the way around, that's what I did. I didn't record it or anything. It's you've seen somebody paint once, you've seen it a million times. So that's painted, that's done. Um, the only reason I did that was because I had to paint that section on the wall behind this thing, so I didn't have to paint around it later. And I was like, well, I already have the brush wet. I already have everything going. I already wasted a roller. Might as well just do the whole thing. So if I do dent the wall, which I probably will, with when installing these boards, I have a little bit of, um, I still, you know, of course I have some sheetrock 45 there. I have some leftover paint. It'll be fine. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get this thing at least marked out on the wall. I want to get my hole drilled and I want to get this thing outside and back behind the building and hopefully probably won't be able to do it, but I want to get, get it on that bracket. So originally I wanted to mount that thing centrally in the garage between that wall and that wall directly, which is about right there. However, I forgot to, uh, factor in that I'm going to be building my YouTube studio from like this corner, this entire corner up to about that rafter right there is going to be YouTube studio. So I need to be centrally located between that rafter and the wall, which is three timbers in. So actually it's going to go right about there. All right, I have the template up on the wall. That's exactly where the unit's gonna go. Um, I have to remove this back plate here, this mounting plate. This gets attached to the wall up there. Now, um, I had to carefully measure this. It has to be a certain distance from the floor to the bottom of the unit and from the top of the unit to the ceiling. Now it recommends that if I have a nine foot ceiling or higher, which I am going to have, um, to have the bottom of the unit 90 inches or 90 point something inches from the floor. However, I can't do that because I don't want this unit to be up against the wood. I want, I need six inch clearance right there. So it's, even though it's a, it says recommended, where is it? Yeah, for ceilings greater than nine feet, recommended distance to the floor is 90 and a half inches. Now, the reason I'm not too worried about it is um, I'm gonna have ceiling fans up here. This hole gets drilled through and then is angled downwards going outside for drainage. That is in between two studs, so I don't have to drill through a stud, obviously, right there. These drill holes, are not 16 on center aligning with the studs in the wall. So I'm making a backer board, just a piece of plywood that I'm gonna be able to screw to the studs and then I can screw the bracket to this. 
Otherwise, I would actually only get two, there's only two studs that would line up along the back plate and it wouldn't be good enough. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make this nice strong backer board here. I cut out a little section for the pipe hole that's gonna go through the wall. So now um, I actually have to go um, to the Ace Hardware or something, maybe Home Depot and pick up a three and a half inch, 3.54 inch or 90 millimeter a hole saw. Um, can I do it with the jigsaw? Mm, probably, but I kind of want it to be perfect. So I also got to touch up that paint that ripped off from the tape. Just for these two things, that was $45 for this and $22 for this. That's crazy, man. That's insane. I didn't think I was going to spend that much. I mean, they are Milwaukee ones, but yeah, they'll last forever. But how many times I could have just used my jigsaw. Yeah, this will make a perfect hole, though. It'll be worth it. All right, well, apparently she bought tickets to the Van Gogh art exhibit um, interactive Van Gogh thing in Denver. We're going to be leaving in about two hours, so I have a little bit of time. Um, I got my, I might be, maybe I can drill my holes through the building over here. Get this thing mounted maybe in two hours. No guarantees. All righty, well, plans changed again. Uh, Heather needs help. Um, making pay dirt bags. What do we got here? She, she has most of the bags made. We have some Discovery, Impossible, Expert, and then a whole bunch of Strike. I think we have to order some Blast labels. All right, so I'm just making some Impossible bags. And uh, this is my favorite stuff to make. So this is all black sand directly from Washington uh, Beach. And then I just, I mix it in with some regular dirt. We need some more. Do that. All right. And then, of course, I got pyrite dust and garnet sand. And a couple gemstones. And, of course, tungsten. Right there. This little jar is super heavy. And there's not even that much in there. But, yeah. Possible bags. And then last, discovery bags. I've got all the gemstones down here. This is just a temporary uh, pay dirt station um, until I get the, the pay dirt room built in the shop. So I'm going to have, you know, individual shelves for everything and it'll just be a whole lot, a whole lot more organized and a whole lot nicer. Yeah. play for too long here because of the music but I found the coolest room ever oh that's not, that's so hot yeah it's fake cool room oh, we couldn't find the parking lot for Arby's so we parked over here <laughs> holy cow that was crazy so this is the third time we're coming back to Arby's because they screwed up our order three times I was like, after the second time, I'm like, if they screwed up one more time. But yeah, they definitely got it right this time. They definitely got it right this time. Half pound beef and cheddar. All right, I've got the piece of plywood up there mounted to the studs. So that thing, if, if I was able to hold on to it, I could do a pull up on that thing and it's not gonna move. So I'm going backwards first in reverse. That kind of scores it so it doesn't shred it. 
and then I'm going to go straight through. I went in reverse the whole way. It cut right through the drywall. That was pretty easy. Look at that, nice perfect circle. All right, so I actually was able to cut through this in reverse all the way through the insulation with that saw. Now I just need to make a hole in the back so I know where to drill on the other side of the wall. That hole has to be about an inch lower not even a whole inch, just like two tenths of an inch lower, just a slight down angle um, on the opposite side. So wherever the pilot hole comes through, I will do a hole, you know, a little bit below that. So there you go, for 70 bucks, it does do a good job. Check it out. All right, we got this piece installed. Now all we really have to do is uh, put caulking around the outside and then I'm actually gonna screw this in to make sure it doesn't move. And I'm gonna, of course, you know, put like expanding foam inside here and just to seal it off. All right, got some liquid nails around it. Put this piece on like this. Got some squeeze out, that's good. That way the little creepy crawlies can't sneak in through here. Now I'm just gonna put three screws in it and it's permanent. All right, and this is the secret on how to make this an awesome clean looking job. Nice countersunk hole. <sighs> that makes the difference between an amateur and a professional job. It just looks so much better with a countersunk hole. Like a hundred times better. It's just the little details like that. What needs to happen outside is I need to make some sort of a mounting bracket for the mounting bracket. And let's see if my uh, flashlight is flashing. It's almost out of batteries. So I, I was able to get the unit out here. It's already 10 p.m. So I'm actually gonna call it after this segment of the video. But before I can drag it back there, I need to remove some stumps. So that's probably going to be what I have to do tomorrow. I have uh, the, the pipes coming out the back here. And I have the bracket mounted on the wall. It's up really high because we do get snow back here. That gets pretty high. I want to make sure that, of course, the unit's out of the snow. But the problem is the studs don't line up with these holes. This has to be exactly 26 and a half inches apart. The studs don't aren't there. So I need to make a pressure treated bracket for it. And I'm gonna soundproof between the, those pressure treat and the wall here. So any vibrations doesn't transfer into the building. And then um, I'm gonna mount this to that wooden pressure treat bracket. And then I can put the unit up here. So, that is the situation. Uh, I didn't get all that much done tonight due to the, the Van Gogh exhibit thing. And um, I had to help with the pay dirt and everything because we got, th thanks so much guys for all the orders. Um, we're getting, I mean, as fast as we can make them, they're selling. So that's really, you know, that's great, you know? So, I mean, we're just constantly um, getting gold directly from our miner. And, I mean, we're ordering, like, three big orders of gold every week. Plus, um, subscribers and people using the Sell, sell Your Gold button on clutchgold.com. Um, just, you know, hundreds of grams coming in. It's awesome. And um, it's definitely... Uh, 
definitely a lot of work to get to this point. Um, you know, I, I credit the YouTube channel, of course, for all the pay dirt sales and just having, you know, just making a product that doesn't rip people off, you know, because there's so many companies out there that are just honestly out there just to rip people off, it seems. So, yeah, when you are guaranteed a minimum amount of gold, you can do the math before you purchase it and then you decide for yourself if it's worth it or not, you know. So, anyway, um, <laughs> Heather's actually in the house making bags right now, making more, more pay dirt bags. I had to get this up off the ground. I had to get that unit at least outside, and tomorrow we're going to start fresh. Um, there's the pressure treat board. I'm going to turn that into a bracket for the bracket, get some acoustic sealant around the back of it to not have it vibrate so much on the studs, and... Yeah, tomorrow, what is tomorrow? Saturday. Yeah, we'll get um, we'll get it taken care of. And besides, once that thing is installed, this entire bench will be nice and cleared off again. So one project at a time. If I was doing more than one project at a time, I wouldn't have any bench space at all, as I already don't. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching, and have a great night, or morning, or day. Yes, these are uploaded during the morning, so have a great day.